All right, let's talk about Shrade. Now, I am not 100% sure. I did not go back and look, but I'm not sure I've done any Shrades. And if I have, it hasn't been a lot because I don't remember doing many of them. This one is the Shrade Truxus? Truix? Not really sure how you pronounce it, but it's part of their Alpha class. Um, these are made in the United States. In um, Colombia. And the packaging is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of a nice presentation and packaging, which is important to me and is unimportant to most of you. So we'll just push that off to the side. I don't know where this one came from. Amazon sent it to me. I don't know who ordered it. I don't know why. I haven't been able to find any information. I have no messages, no emails, no smoke signals that told me that a trade was coming. But that's okay. Hopefully somebody will see this and chime in and tell me what I'm supposed to do with it next because <laughs> I don't know. Am I supposed to send it back to them? A lot of people will send me stuff straight from the store they buy it at and then I ship it on to them. Um, I don't know. So... Let's dive into this. This is very um, similar to other knives, okay, with its barrel lock. They call it a pivot lock. Benchmade calls it the access lock. Some people call it a barrel lock. Um, it all works the same. Here it is on the 945, the nine, Benchmade 945, gold class limited unlimited apparently i've learned now they will make it in this configuration as many as they can for the year of 2022 and then they will stop this one happens to be if you saw my video number 1380 there could be like 10,000 of them who knows but there's a lot of similarities in these <clears throat> the 940 the full size uh, Osborne is about this same size. Um, so it's a better comparison, but I sold my 940 to Professor EDC, so I can't give you a true comparison. But the shape of the handle is really what is the most similar to me, um, just because of their shape and design, the pivot, the barrel lock, all of that is very similar. This particular one here is $700. We talked about that in my previous video. You can go check that out. Comment below in that video about the price. This guy here off of Amazon is $199. Off of Nice Center is $167. Okay. A standard uh, Benchmade Osborne 940 in G10 on their website is $210. So... $10 more than the Amazon price of this. Okay. Uh, and you have a different blade shape. The 940 has this same reverse Tonto blade shape. I much prefer this blade shape. I think this is a cool knife. It's 199 bucks, 167 on Knife Center. Runs on bearings. Now the bearings are a little bit... Uh, rough, if you will. It's hard to explain. It doesn't really affect the action, but it doesn't feel glassy smooth. It's a little bit rough. But it works just fine. I may take it apart and clean it out. It may just need to be lubed up or something. I don't know. Um, so I might do that at some point. We'll see. I don't... I, I kind of want to know what I'm supposed to do with this knife. Was this... Whose is it? <laughs> All right, let's dive into the specs really quick. It's just a hair under four and a half inches. Just a hair under seven and three eighths. Sorry, seven and five eighths. I can't even read my own writing. Now, the blade is interesting. The blade comes in, I measure from the edge of the handle to the tip at 3.1 inches. They advertise this as a three and a half inch blade. Let's talk about that for a minute. A lot of companies will give a different number than what I measure. And if it's off by a little bit, I measure 3.1, they call it 3.2. Okay, sure, no problem. But we're almost a half an inch off. 
If I measure from the pivot, then it's 3.6, which isn't three and a half. So I don't know how they measure. I don't know how a lot of companies measure. That's why I always like to do my own measurements. Okay. Behind the edge is a little thick on this one at 0 0.03. Blade steel is S35. So that's good. Weighs in at 4.2 ounces and it's 0 0.530 overall. Now it is G10 scales with stainless bolsters. And let's zoom in. Now, I wish, and it's, we'll see if I can even show it here. There is a texture to this, which you can kind of see, I hope. And the texturing is fine on this show side, but when you put it underneath the pocket clip like this, it's really rough on your pants. Like it pulls a lot going in and out. This is really going to be like a cheese grater to your jeans. So that I'm not a fan of. I also wish that they would have used countersunk hardware there because this is a rather smaller opening for the clip. And it absolutely gets hung up on the on the uh, screws in my jeans. So I wish this opening was a little bit bigger so it wouldn't get hung up. And then that might actually help with some of this texturing as well. I'm not a huge fan of branding on the clips. Again, that's just me. But honestly, I love this G10 pattern. I like the coloring of the stainless bolsters and liners. And I like the finish, the bead blasted finish on the blade. This is a really good user beater knife, if you will. And at 167 or 199 on Amazon or Knife Center, it's really not bad for what you're getting. Now, you could go and get a Kubi. This particular one is the KB237. We've talked about this a million times. You guys already know my feelings on it. These are like $60 or $70. Uh, and it's got a bunch of junk on it because I use it to open some boxes. So this is $60, $70 on Amazon now because they've gone up a little bit bigger. It's a flipper, which I kind of prefer over the thumb stud access lock thing. Um, barrel pivot lock, but you're getting S35 and a different style lock if you're not into flippers. I don't know. I mean, this is a pretty cool knife. I'm not going to lie. What I think this would be really good for would be to just throw in the glove box or the center console of your car, your girlfriend's car, your second car. You know, you never know. I think it's always good to have a backup. I think there's been maybe twice that I have ran out of the house without a knife. I know. I'm going to admit it here on sort of live TV. Um, and there's been a couple of times that I have left without a watch. I have not left without both at the same time. That's not happened. And I don't think I've ever forgot my flashlight. So I don't know. But... To have backups in the car, I think is a really solid idea. So we saw it next to the Kubi. Do a couple of quick size comparisons. Here it is with the Sharpie. The Spider Codelica. As I get the box of it out of the way. And how about a Hellraiser P-Series? I don't know, guys. What do you think? I mean, we talked about it on a live stream the other night. And a lot of people kind of dug it. Um, I think people kind of said 199 bucks. Wow. But it's American made. If that's important to you, then maybe it is a better deal than the Kubi, which is not American made. This Kubi has D2, so it's a different steel. Is it real D2, like CPM D2? 
They only call it D2. But in all fairness, Greg Medford, who uses a lot of D2, he only calls it D2 also. So do we really know? I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying most everybody just says they use D2. Nobody really specifies that it's CPM D2, which is a different animal altogether than regular D2. But here you know this is S35. Other than the fact that it doesn't work well in the pocket, I think it's awesome. This is the action right out of the box, which is smoother than, other than the bearings are a little bit rough, it's a smoother or more deliberate, I don't know, a faster action than this brand new Osborne. It hasn't broken in yet. It's running on washers. This is bearings. doesn't need to really break in. It's just perfect. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear what you think.